first met Les in 1968 on my Big O.E. He was interested in photography and fishing, as was I, and we just uh, became natural soulmates. Les was a lot older than me, so we knew that we would never grow old together. We didn't have any children. He passed away in September 2003. I spend 95% of my time by myself. All I talk to here are the walls. I first went up to Tonga Perotu in 2001 and, and was just gobsmacked by the wildness of the place. And it's absorbed into your entire being. When I first came, the third little sister out there, she was intact. That's that little stump out there in September 2003. A massive storm took that out. I actually mourned the loss of her. She was like a family, really, like a family member. Yeah, what happens is when the tide comes in, there's no way out because it comes right up to the cliffs and you can't climb the cliffs. Time is your enemy here. If you're lucky, you get caught out. If you're unlucky, you're dead. This coastline is eroding at a rate of two metres annually, and this is what I'm trying to record. I'm now heading towards Gibbs's Point. You get some really fantastic shots of waves smashing up the cliffs. This photo here was taken on the 19th of September when we had a massive storm. The barometer dropped to 964, and I've never seen it that low. The waves scared me. Well, what scared me more was just the whole cliff shuddered like it was an earthquake. But the worst ones are the ones that come over the top of the cliff behind you. To stand there and know that you're going to have these monstrous waves coming over the cliff behind you, and then to be able to record that, yeah, I, I think that's really something. People like fast cars and motorbikes, and I like this. The closer you are to death, the more alive you feel. But when you're on your own, nobody cares whether you live or die, so you substitute a human with something else. With me, it was Tonga Perotu, and I feel like I'm contributing something with documenting the enormous changes on the coastline.